you know, this is uh, was a very I, I chose my homily to be taken from the gospel. It's it's a hard thing to do. I, I don't know why. I just had a really hard time with it. I read this thing so many times, and I had all sorts of questions like camel hair and loincloth, really, really, locusts, really, and honey. But the more important questions I had were like, why does the preparation for the gospel begin in the wilderness of all places? How does John prepare the way? It just says he's to prepare the way. In what sense is John's preaching good news? And lastly, why is this only the beginning of the gospel? Well, let's look at each of those by themselves and figure this out. Why does the preparation for the gospel begin in the wilderness? Well, the Judean wilderness is not a thick, dense forest that we're kind of used to thinking about when we think of wilderness. The area west of the, the Jordan is a dry, hot, desolate place. More than 20 miles from and 3,000 feet below Jerusalem, it's a very remote area. And at that time period, it was also very unsafe. It was populated primarily with thieves and wild animals, including roaming packs of lions. We forget that back in the day, lions roamed freely in the, the, those areas. A city could be comfortable, safe, and secure, and the wilderness was just the opposite. Uncomfortable, dangerous, and unprotected. If you and I went, wanted to proclaim the good news uh, to a whole lot of people, we probably wouldn't pick the middle of a desert as a place to start. A public relations consultant probably would have told John to stay in Jerusalem to meet the people where they were, to speak to the largest crowd possible, and to the place where it was easiest to find them. But God instead instructed John to preach in the wilderness. And amazingly enough, the people all came out to him. Why did God choose the wilderness? I believe he did it because the wilderness is a, a metaphor or a picture of our spiritual state. The beginning of the gospel comes to us not in our protected cities or in our safe place, not where we feel comfortable, but, but not where we feel safe and secure. It, if we think we're fine on our own, we don't want to hear the message. But God uses difficulties in our life to awaken us to the need for Him. So God sends this message of hope to us in the wilderness, in the midst of troubles and trials. That's my answer to that question. Now the second question, how does John prepare the way? Well, he prepares the way for the coming of the Messiah by preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, repentance means turning away from the old way of life, uh, acknowledging that it's a worth, worthless as a future, and turning to a new way of life. John prepares the hearts of people for the coming Savior as they must acknowledge their need of a Savior before they can respond to a Savior. See, Jesus brings out this point. The folks that are in good health have no need of a doctor. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If we think we're healthy, we don't listen to a doctor's advice. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> say it a thousand times. Given that, if we think we're righteous, we have no need for a Savior. John prepares the way by calling people to repentance. Well, now in the third question, what sense is John's preaching good news? Well... At first glance, John's preaching may not sound that way. He's calling them to repent, after all, getting them to acknowledge that they themselves are in a spiritual wilderness. Nobody wants to admit that. Why is this the beginning of the gospel? Well, verse 4 contains the answer. John was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He tells people to repent, yes, but he also tells them that they are forgiven. How contrary to the preaching that they had been used to receiving from the Pharisees and other teachers of the law, these false guides would have said that the series of formulated legalistic steps were necessary to receive God's forgiveness for even the most trivial, unintentional sin. As for those serious sinners, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and those intentional Sabbath breakers, there was no hope for them and they deserved to die. Well, maybe that's a little strong. <laughs> those teachers of the law prided themselves on their understanding of the law, but they completely misread the Old Testament. You see, Jesus says as to a Pharisee in John 3.10, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? The Old Testament is not the story of God's grace. The Old Testament God is a God of wrath and vengeance. Now John is saying that God provides for the weakness of people. 
He provides a way to receive forgiveness. So John's message comes with starting, startling freshness to these Jews. Uh, they were burdened with a legalistic interpretation of the Old Testament. There's hope, they thought. Repent and he forgi be forgiven. Grace is abundant. I know I'm in the wilderness, they say. I know I deserve judgment. I know I cannot live up to the law of the Pharisees. But John tells me to repent and I will be clean, to turn back on sin, and God will forgive me. This is why all Jerusalem travels that long, dangerous road to hear John. He offers something that they had never heard before, God's grace. And the answer to the last question, why is this only the beginning? And I thought, why is this only the beginning? Isn't the message of God's grace the complete gospel? Well, yeah and no. John's message is one of hope for a desperate people. But John makes clear in the last two verses of our gospel passage that he's only preparing the way. There is even better news to come. Let's look at our gospel again. He says, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Repentance is necessary. Forgiveness is wonderful. But God is doing much more than offering forgiveness. God is offering these people new life, new power. God offers himself, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not only about the forgiveness of sins, it's the beginning of the gospel. The full gospel is the hope of being God's beloved children, perfect, spotless, loved, and Christ-like. The full gospel promises that we'll be, we will be transformed completely into his image through the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. This offer of power over sin of the ruler of the, from the ruler of the universe, of being his people, this offer still stands if we repent and believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord. We can have the power to overcome sin. We too can become the perfect spotless children of Christ. All right. Those were answered. Let me just conclude by saying the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes to us in the wilderness of January the 17th, 2016. The wilderness of a cold, hard winter. The wilderness of our own hardened and self-righteous hearts. The gospel doesn't proclaim that you're okay and I'm okay, that the problems of the world lie with all those other people, but the gospel proclaims that, more, that none of that should matter to us Christians because God has dealt with sin and death, and now we can be free. That's why we come to church. We come because it's a conversion, confession, repentance, reconciliation, forgiveness, and sanctification center where flawed people place their faith in Christ. They gather to know and love him better, and they learn to love others as he is designed. Our faith has set us free. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which sincere and meaningful repentance must be built. If we truly seek to put away sin, we must first look to him who is the author of our salvation. The first step is repentance. Yes, repent, John says, for the kingdom of God is at hand. No matter how large our failures, no matter how short we fall from a perfect life, God is ready to accept us. And that is good news. He accepts us by the blood of his Son, our Savior. This is the beginning of the gospel. Not just the whole gospel, but just the beginning. Let's leave church today. Go forth into this wilderness we call this world and spread that good news around Amen. 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 Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.